Ladies and gentlemen, the first element of the unique orbiting laboratory complex, home to the first permanent amateur radio station in space, was launched November 20, 1998. Since attaining orbit, the ISS has grown from a lone, uninhabited module into a continuously staffed multi-module research facility. The amateur radio on the International Space Station ARIS program has been a part of the ISS since November 2000 when the Expedition 1 crew of William Shepard KD-5 GSL, Yuri Gidzenko and Sergei Krikaliev, U-5 Mir, arrived on board for a four-month tour. The first element of the ISS, the Russian Zarya Functional Cargo Block or FGB, was launched in 1998 from Baikonur, Kazakhstan. The shuttle endeavor delivered the second element, the US connecting module called Unity, two weeks later. The Ares initial station gear went into space in September 2000. It was an Ericsson handheld transceiver delivering nominally 5 watts radio frequency power. A month later, the FCC granted vanity call sign NA1SS to the International Space Station Amateur Radio Club for US Ares operations. And Russia issued the call signs RZ3DZR and RS0ISS for ISS use. Using the initial ham station gear, William Shepard, KD5 GSL, who dubbed the ISS Space Station Alpha, made the first Irish school group contact on December 21, 2000, answering questions posed by students at Luther Burbank Elementary School near Chicago. Some 200 youngsters, teachers, parents and news media representatives were on hand to witness the event. This was an important milestone with many more to come. The first Irish station used antennas on Zaria. These antennas were initially operational during the first building phases of the International Space Station. They were offered for ARIS use when the agencies did not need them anymore. In subsequent years, four antennas were installed on the Russian service module Zvezda, the living place of the Russian crew. In that module, a Kenwood D700 VHF UHF transceiver was soon installed, boosting the Irish transmitting power from 5 watt to 25 watt. Meanwhile, ESA, the European Space Agency, was building Columbus. In 2002, a request was submitted by Ares Europe chairman for providing amateur radio facilities on this new module. The idea was to install antennas on the nadir of Columbus before launch. Columbus was to be transported by a space shuttle to the ISS and very little space was left between the module and the shuttle bay. Therefore, only flat patch antennas could be installed. Initially, provisions were made for UHF, L-band and S-band antennas 
and to cover the development, manufacturing and certification cost, a funding campaign was launched worldwide. Finally, enough money was collected for L and S band antennas, which were developed by Professor Pavel Kabacik at the Institute of Telecommunications and Acoustics of the Wroclaw University of Technology. When Columbus was launched and attached to the ISS, February 7, 2008, there were Irish antennas on board. This was another milestone. Soon after, ESA was planning an experiment and needed a VHF antenna on Columbus. RS Europe chairman incidentally pointed to the way the Iris antennas had been installed on Zvezda. The antennas were clipped on handrails around the Ma Russian module by fixtures dubbed GATOR, an acronym for Grappling Adapter to On-Orbit Handrails. Interestingly, GATOR is also short for Alligator, the crocodile species common in Florida. Gators were used for the ESA VHF antenna as well as for the ARIS VHF UHF antenna which was installed at the same time, November 2009. One more milestone. Soon the VHF UHF antenna was used for ARIS school contacts together with a backup unit of the original Ericsson once used in the early days on Zaria. This is still the setup in use today. So, in 2010, Ares was active on Columbus on VHF. Elesbent antennas were installed and tested, but no amateur equipment was on board to put them in use. The intent was to install an amateur television transmitter, a debate between proponents of analog ATV and proponents of digital ATV turned to the advantage of the latter. AMSAT Italia took the lead and with the support of astronaut Paolo Nespoli approached ESA. The agency signed a contract with manufacturer Kaiser Italia for the development of a DATV transmitter which was called HAM Video. After a long certification procedure, the HAM Video transmitter was finally upmast to the ISS. The commissioning of the HAM Video transmitter was performed April to March 2014. Another milestone. The use of the HAM Video transmitter has been entrusted officially by ESA to ARIS, but its implementation for school contacts is not straightforward. Ham video uses a camera that is battery fed. That means that before each use, the astronaut has to install fresh batteries and withdraw them after the radio contact. Moreover, According NASA rules, any images taken on the ISS shall be recorded and downloaded via a dedicated computer. Altogether, whereas a regular ARI school contact takes 20 minutes on the timeline of the astronaut, a ham video enhanced school contact would take twice as much. Given the astronauts' workload, the NASA planners limit the time for an Irish school contact to the minimum. The additional operations needed for ham video, the battery exchange, the recording and the downloading, can be performed before and after the contact, during the free time of the astronaut. The decision to support ham video operations depends entirely on the astronaut. 
the first astronaut who supported ham video for school contacts was Major Tim Peake, KG-5 BVI, during the Principia mission in 2016. One more Ares milestone. Meanwhile, the ham video transmitter is permanently transmitting without camera with sound level at zero. This is most useful for the ground stations which need these signals for testing and tuning their antennas. In the near future, other milestones are in the pipeline. The US Iris team is building an interoperable power supply, so called because it is intended for use in Columbus as well as in Zvezda. Interestingly, the mains in the Russian sector of the ISS are at 28 volts DC, whereas they are at 120 volts DC in the American sector. And Columbus belongs to the American sector. The interoperable power supply will provide power to, the, to all the ISS equipment in Columbus. The ham video transmitter as well as the future Kenwood D710 transceiver which will boost power for Irish school contacts. Moreover, a slideshow unit is planned for permanent ham TV transmissions. These are the past, present and future milestones along the road of the Irish success story. A great story to tell about. I thank you for your attention.